things. Firstly, an oil boom. The, the income tax, the top rate of tax in Venezuela is much lower than our own. Uh, when the oil prices collapse, which they didn't prepare for that through the economy... Are you saying that the second socialist point, Venezuela is the, collapsing because of oil no, 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 prices? No, 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 the second point, the second point, one second, this is important, I, I think it's really important that we talk about what's happening in Venezuela. The second point is the imposition of exchange and price controls riddled with corruption, which have led to drastic shortages, which should not have been imposed, which were imposed supposedly as a temporary measure back in 2002, and of caused calamity. Corruption what, that is what inevitable. Would, that's, 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 Kate coming back on your two points. When, when, two when you points have there. state intervention and when you have state control in the way that Venezuela does, that corruption is inevitable. Let's talk about what's happening in Venezuela. Infant mortality is up by 10,000%. Inflation is up by 947%. Poverty has gone from 48% to 82%. The minimum wage, talk about some progressive utopia, is down by 75%. Mm -hmm. The murder rate is 10 times that of the global average. This is a socialist experiment gone, truly awry. And no, so, no, no, sorry, I just, I just have to follow this up very quickly. There had been many apologies made for years by the left, many Guardian headlines, many comments from the leader of the opposition, Jeremy Corbyn, from MPs like Diane Abbott. An apology is needed now. An outright apology. I don't care just if Jeremy Corbyn's in Croatia. Should he, should this hold has on. to he, be apologized for... Kate, does Kate have a point? Because no, no, the, no, the Labour leader has managed to mention Arsenal, Arsenal Football Club while on holiday. But not but the not thousands of people dying in Venezuela. He will, he will. I'm sure when he comes back on holiday, he will, because the, the amount of scrutiny which is currently being placed on this. As I've said, firstly, socialist governments in Ecuador, in Bolivia, in Uruguay, there are not afflicted. But are not. experiments fail. On, they one fail second, like this. One second, come on. They, have, they are all having huge economic growth. They have over the last few years. They haven't collapsed, and they've massively reduced poverty in their own country. So that's not true. You're picking the second and choosing one, the definition the second of point, Well, they are socialist governments. Just countries second, that are far more free but maybe on, have higher tax rates are right. not socialist. Boli this is socialism. Bolivia and Uruguay are ruled by socialist governments. The second point, and this is the utter hypocrisy, the utter, the utter hypocrisy of, of this whole argument. At the moment... Our government is arming Saudi Arabia to the teeth, a vicious dictatorship, which... That's no, that, no, 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 no. Let me finish. Let me finish. This is a critical point about the hypocrisy of this debate. Jeremy Corbyn hasn't sold weapons to Venezuela. Our government is selling weapons which are now being dropped on Yemen. Yemen is now being convulsed by famine and a cholera epidemic. Our government is responsible. Second point. No Second one is disputing point. that. Yeah, no, 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 disputing no, 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 they, uh, no, but this is the point. Why is there no national outrage in the press about the fact our government... There is. About the, the Guardian. But, but there why is. our government... No, why the Conservative Party is responsible for a humanitarian crisis, directly not saying kind words about okay, Saudi Arabia, very, but arming them to the team. Very quickly, is the why, why, Owen says there's not enough coverage of that. There is well, I mean, There's no I, 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 I agree none. with. I mean, I, I agree with him from a so libertarian point of view. So why are you attacking the Conservative Party? Why are you blaming oh, the Conservative Party? Oh, and if you want to chat about Saudi Arabia and the arms deal, I bet you and I could write a great joint op-ed on but that. Why, that does not excuse do you the hold, fact that there isn't been an apology the from Jeremy Corbyn. Do you, hold on, on let, 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 do you want an apology from Theresa May about what's happening? I would love an apology for Theresa May on Saudi Arabia and a lot of other. And Yemen and Turkey. That does not distract from the point that headlines from you, from the Guardian, from Jeremy Corbyn, from Diane Abbott, have been praising this regime for years, and it's. It turned out it was wrong, and it's what, okay to apologize for that. What, what is worse, selling weapons to regimes which I bomb countries... I think the countries, endorsement of anybody is, dying which, is a bad thing. Which is worse, selling weapons to b b a, 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 a murderous dictator which slits the throat of people... Listen, we're coming off... We're coming off what no, it's we, a critical yeah. point. It's about the utter hypocrisy. Rate. We're coming off which is absolutely back. inexcusable, as Surely I've already both said. Need we need to come back. We'll continue in the break. It is a debate that deserves much more is in our Westminster studio for us now. Um, hello to you both. Kate, to you first of all, what do you think? I don't think that this should be a choice between whether or not you can access social care or keep your home. Uh, that's not a fair choice. Uh, fundamentally, this policy at the moment is not fit for purpose. What the government should be doing is looking to the rest of Europe where you have insurance style systems where people can insure their homes and their assets over the course of their life against um, the social care that they might need later down the line. We need to be looking at a pre-funded NHS at the moment. The pay-as-you-go system just isn't working. The burden is falling on, burden is falling on young workers working people in order to top up what is a demographic that is only aging more and more. It's just not sustainable. Uh, so we need to be looking at, you know, some pretty bold policy reform, but I don't think that the policy of this dementia tax is fit for purpose as it stands now. Owen, should you be able to keep your home uh, and get the state to pay for your care? 
Well, again, it just shows you pensioners can't trust the Conservatives. The Tories made a strategic decision in the election that pensioners would vote for them come what may, which is why we ended up with the so-called dementia tax. I have to say, I mean, the number of U-turns on this, they U-turned on it during the election campaign, they U-turned on it afterwards, completely abandoning it, and now they're talking about U-turning all over again. To quote the philosopher Tommy Rowe, dizzy, my head is spinning like a will pull, it never ends. It's just un astonishing the number of U-turns they've done on this. But the critical point about the dementia tax is this. If, God forbid, you get, a, you get cancer, you get a heart condition, then the state, the NHS, will look after you. The problem with this is if you get a condition like dementia, you're singled out and expected to pay for it with your home. That's fundamentally unfair. It, it discriminates based on the condition you get. Now, many of us have had relatives with dementia. It's a terrible illness to have, but this is not how you pay for it. And indeed, under the Conservatives, tens of thousands of social care jobs were lost because of billions of pounds worth of cuts because of the austerity they pursued over the last few years. The way of addressing that is to ask the top 5% to pay a bit more in tax, to increase corporation tax back to where it was in 2011, still lower than a lot of industrialised countries, I might add, and to level a financial transaction tax. That will raise tens of billions of pounds, part of which can go towards a social care system, and as Labour are suggesting themselves, to have a national care system that's integrated, because at the moment it's chaotic, it's piecemeal, it's a lottery system. Older people built this country up, the least they deserve is security and dignity in retirement. We can afford it, but it does mean asking those at the top to pay a bit more money. Is that reasonable, Kate? Um, I think Owen um, nails the point about unfairness. If you get cancer, then it's covered. If you get dementia, then it's not. It's a very good point. But the problem is that I'm not hearing any credible policy solutions. The truth of the matter is that we're already taking about 38, 39 percent of GDP in via tax. That is the highest that you can get. I mean, historically, you really can't get more tax um, than around that percentage. And we're spending roughly 45 percent of GDP, which is why we still have that massive deficit. And the truth of the matter is that young people will pay for this down the line. Money spent is money borrowed that has to be paid back. And we hear about increasing corporation tax, but my goodness, what hasn't Jeremy Corbyn pledged to spend corporation tax on? Apparently, it's going to pay for social care. It's also going to pay for his education promises that amount to something like £20 billion. It's going to pay for A&E services. It's going to pay for lifting the public sector pay cap. This is not realistic. And I think the public knows that there isn't this unlimited amount of funds out there. So we have to start making some tough calls. I don't think that the dementia tax is actually the right way to go about it. But my goodness, pledging all of the this extra money that's apparently going to come off of some magic money tree isn't the right solution either. And I would love for the Labour Party or any party to start talking about intergenerational unfairness. How are we going to get these people who can't even get on the housing ladder into a position where they're not paying for other people to sustain their houses, their social care down the road? We have to have these hard conversations. And to simply blame the Conservatives or to blame any party isn't particularly helpful. All right. Well, the difference, the difference is, and I know Kate's not going to defend the Conservatives on this point, to be fair, but Labour costed its manifesto in full last time. The Conservatives didn't. There wasn't a single pound sign in the Conservative manifesto. So arrogant were they in believing that the election was in the bag. It is costed. And the, the point about intergenerational so fairness... going to increase taxes. Is, is, yes, it is, Kate. It was, it was costed. And indeed, you and indeed Kate, you the difference that percentage is you can be broke pro-young and you can be pro-old. Okay, you can be both pro-youth and pro-old, and the argument Labour have been making, and they costed in their manifesto, was to get rid of tuition fees, which saddles younger people with debt for daring to dream and aspire to a university education, whilst dealing with a social care crisis. Now, there is an alternative. We agree the deficit needs to come down in this country, and the way we do that isn't with the old failed model, which created lots of low-paid jobs, where people paid less tax, paid less money into the economy. That's why, contrary to the Conservatives' promise, they said they'd wipe out the deficit by 2015, if you remember. I think it's now 2025. They keep kicking the can down the road endlessly. It's to pursue a policy of growth to deal with our productivity crisis, which is absolutely astonishing to deal with our fallen living standards, which is now the worst now, according to the RFS, since the 1750s, which is quite a long time away, uh, time ago, to say the least. Our economic model is fundamentally broken, and that's the reason we still have this huge deficit. But we can deal with urgent problems like ensuring older people in retirement have security and decency and dignity without, if you like, pit pitting the generations against each other. Okay. 
course you can be pro-youth and pro-old at the same time, but what you can't do is promise to fund the triple lock on state pensions and get rid of university tui tuition fees and build, you know, thousands upon thousands of government-sponsored homes um, and keep the winter fuel allowance. You can't promise to do all these things when you just don't have the money to do it. We've actually raised more via corporation tax by bringing down the percentage. So when labor comes along and says it's going to bring it back up to 26 percent, there's good historical reason to think that we'll actually get less tax revenue from that. These were not fully costed policies. No political party at the moment is having those tough conversations about what we have to do to make things like health care um, and social care manageable in the future. And I think that to me is what's so deeply frustrating. You talk about having a, a system that's pro-growth. Well, trying to crack down on corporations and try to tax people out of their income is not pro-growth. And it's so confusing to me that on this particular topic, the Labor Party and, and Owen, you're saying that it's okay, you have the right to keep your home, but you don't have the right to keep your income. We're going to take more and more of that from you. You're just picking and choosing where you want to go into people's homes and take over what they have and where you don't. And it seems to be a decision that's based on what the conservatives are saying just to be in opposition to them. It makes no sense. Okay, come back on that, Owen. No, Kate, look. Kate, Kate, we've gone through the longest squeeze in wages now since the 1750s, but it's been boom time for those at the top. Indeed, the wealth of the richest 1,000 people in this country doubled during one of the worst economic crises that we've seen in our history. The ratio between pay, between CEOs and workers in this country has exploded over the last few decades. What we're simply asking in, in, in this country, increasingly, tens of millions of people, is to say, look, people at the top are doing very, very well. They can afford to pay a bit more tax, and we can use that to invest in the economy. And the problem with investment in this country is we've de facto had an investment strike where companies have not been investing. We need to stimulate growth in this country, but that means the state actually investing in the economy, updating our crumbling infrastructure, uh, Since for example. The 1970s, and, yes, real there are all incomes the things we need to do. For example, UK, thanks to capital, dealing with not it in policies like what you're proposing. Okay. Okay. Okay, since 2008, as you're fully aware, we've had the longest squeeze in living standards of any industrialised country other than Greece. That's simply we not sustainable, and it's bad for the deficit, the because when people don't have money, when people don't have pennies in their pockets, Kate, they don't go out and spend it, and they pay less in tax, and we spend more money as taxpayers on in-work benefits, subsidising that low pay. That's why we need an industrial strategy that creates better paid jobs, where people invest their money in the economy, and we spend less money in in-work benefits. Guys,